Welcome to the Make course. I'm Rudi Schlaf. In this tutorial I will discuss numerical arrays and how we can access array elements using loops. Before I get into the arrays, uh, let me point out that uh, in order to follow this uh, tutorial hands-on, you need to know how to use the serial port of the Arduino. So if you don't know how to do that, uh, I recommend you go to eeawesome.com and click on the video uh, tab and then you watch the first uh, four videos and after that you will know how to use the serial port. It's also good to know that this video is based on our initial video about variables which is posted at makecourse.com so you can go on the video tab here and then intro to programming videos that gets you on this page and so if you watch video number five that will teach you how to define variables and that is the basis for the numerical arrays that I will discuss in this tutorial. Before I discuss the arrays, let's uh, revisit the variables real quick. So this slide is from uh, video 5. And when you define a variable, you use a type definition that specifies what type of variable it is and a variable name. So you could call it A or B or whatever comes to your mind. And so what you get uh, when you do such a definition, you get a pointer to a memory address and a number of memory cells that uh, constitutes your variable. So in the case of an integer, you have two bytes. If you define a floating point variable, uh, you have four bytes. So as I just said, a variable is usually associated with a name. So here I call them just A or B, but you could of course call them any name that comes to your mind. And so that limits the way that you can access these variables, these memory spaces. Essentially in the, in the program you always have to say variable A equals a certain number or variable B is a number. And that is not convenient for a lot of applications. Now array variables are different in that the memory cells, the individual variables are addressable with an index. And so when you define an array, you basically tell the compiler how many variables you need. So if you say integer array A5, that tells the compiler that you want an array that contains five integer numbers. Of course, in the uh, program, you would just say int as type definition here, but you will see that in the Arduino sketch in a bit. So here I define A with five integer elements and uh, B with seven. And so what you get uh, through this definition, you get basically again a pointer to a start address of this array and then you get five memory elements that in this case are each one integer number. So the great thing here is that now we can for example do a for loop and address these individual array elements using an index that we can simply count from 0 to 4. It's interesting to note here that the arrays, when you define them, you put here the uh, number of elements, so 5 in this case, but you count uh, starting at 0. So you count from 0 to 4 while you define the array with a 5 here. That's something to keep in mind when you write your program. Okay, time to look at the Arduino sketch. I start out here by defining an array and so essentially that's exactly the same uh, syntax like you would use it for a variable except that we specify here within the uh, brackets how many uh, array elements we want. So this here defines us an array called my array with 10 integer variables in there and that of course you know now means that this here reserves uh, 20 bytes of memory because each integer variable has uh, 2 bytes on the Arduino. In the setup, I simply start the serial port so we can uh, read out the array after we uh, fill it with numbers. And then I have here a for uh, loop where I simply fill the array. Um, and so I'm, I'm running here from, from 0 to 9. Remember we count from 0 to 9 but we have 10 elements in there. And so I simply count up the i and then I uh, write here three times i into the array elements. So the first one is zero, so we should get a zero. The, 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 the second one is one, so we should get a three in there and so on. And then in the main loop down here, I simply print this is my array and then I do the same uh, for loop again 
and now simply print the index, then some spaces, and then what's in the array element that corresponds to that index. So let's see what happens. Okay, I turn on the serial monitor. And now here, this is my array, and as I just said, 0, 0, and the first, the second element has a 3, the, the third element has a 6, because the index is 2, right, so 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and so on, and we end up here at 27. So you see here immediately the power of arrays, because instead of writing now 10 uh, program lines, where we say uh, array element 1 is 3, uh, array element or variable 2 is 6, variable 3 is 9, and so on, we were able to make a loop here and simply index those variables by using the i. Very powerful concept. So all this is great. Now you know how to make an array and how to index variables. And of course, that's a, a concept that is helpful in, in many applications, like if you wanted to log data over time, uh, you could simply every five minutes uh, write some data point into the next array element and so forth. So that's great, but there are a couple things we need to keep in mind. So we usually rely on the compiler that it uh, keeps tabs on things and prevents us from doing stupid things uh, by giving us an error message. But here in this case, uh, I want to show you one thing. So we defined here the array with 10 elements. And so of course one could wonder what happens if I make this loop here now simply that it doesn't go to the last element here, but uh, 10 more elements uh, after that tenth one. So we can just run the loop here to 19 instead of 9 and so, um, well, try to write these numbers here into 20 array elements even though we only defined here 10. Well, anyway, let's see what happens. So you see here the compiler does not complain at all. It's uploading and it's done uploading and so let's fire this up and what you see here now is that this is my array and we count up here to 27 in the first 10 elements and then um, it simply goes on, right? So here's the 19th element. So you kind of wonder why do we even bother uh, defining here 10 array elements? If this isn't strange already, well, it gets worse. Let me show you something. So I'm making a second uh, integer array. My second array also with 10 array elements. So we're basically now defining a second set of 20 bytes that uh, is uh, the array my second array. And so let's simply print that also in this loop down here. So serial print ln now my second array, and I put the same index in there, right, because we have 10 uh, array elements, so we can address both of these arrays now smoothly with the same index. And uh, let's see what happens. So let me upload this. So compiler, no complaints, everything is just great. So it's done uploading. And so let's see what's in our printout here. And so you see here that while we get our first array, my array, printed out as we did before, 3, 9, 4, 12, 5, 15, 6, 18, and so forth, but the second array, without having ever written anything into it, right, we don't do anything with the second array except printing it here, you find essentially the same numbers that we found in the previous printout that came after the tenth element, right? So we find here 30, 33, 36, 39, and so on. And this here should make you really concerned because it tells you that it is absolutely in your power by using indices here that are out of the range of your uh, of your first array to override another array uh, or any other variable that has been defined after my array uh, purely by accident. And so a really good way to uh, keep this from happening is for example you could here make a define statement define and we could simply define a number like array 
length and you could put this array length into your definition of my array, right? And so this is simply when it's compiling, uh, we should of course say here that array length is 10. And so while it's compiling now, when you have a defined statement like this, it simply replaces array length with whatever you define array length to be. And so in this case, it's 10. And so the, the compiler will still compile this as my array with 10 elements, but for you now, things have changed dramatically because you don't have to remember it's a 10, uh, the array length, but you, you just say it's, the, it's, it's array length. And so you can now use array length here in your for loop Right, it will replace this now by 10, and you can just say array length minus 1, and then everything should be okay. And so it's uploading, done uploading, and we we'll run this. And so you see here now that you get 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9, 4, 12, but the array elements of my second array, they are all 0. Right, and this is what happens at the beginning when your program is executed. The, 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 the variables are set to zero by default when you define them. So what's the bottom line here? Well, I think you understand that arrays are very useful because you can use a numerical index to address your variables. That uh, makes it possible to use a loop and simply uh, address your um, array elements instead of having to uh, use uh, individual variable names, which, which could be very cumbersome for many applications. However, uh, all this usefulness and convenience comes at a price. There is nothing that prevents you from exceeding the allotted array memory space uh, if you uh, use indices that are out of bounds. And so it's totally up to you to make sure that the indices stay within what you define when you define the array. A great practice that you should adopt right from the start here is to use the define compiler directive, as it is called, uh, because that allows you to replace a number that is difficult to remember and so forth with a human interpretable name. And so as I just uh, did it, I said array size is 10, right? So when you write array size is 10, then you can use array size throughout your code instead of the number 10. And so that reduces, of course, the, uh, the potential for making a mistake that you go out of bounds with your index. Another great advantage of using this here is that if you ever wanted to make your array bigger down the road because you decide you need more array elements because your programming objectives changed, all you need to do is to say here array size is a different number and then if you use the array size in all the for loops in your code and so forth to address the array then it would update itself and so everything would still be working. So these defined statements they are really awesome uh, for changing code down the road and for preventing uh, mistakes by simply using the wrong number in some loop and then you sit there for like three hours trying to figure out why your program doesn't work. All right, that's it. Now you know how to use numerical arrays and how to handle them properly. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.